Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, October 1, 2020. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? We actually have a lot of stuff on the docket, more than meets the eye. We have one of those situations where I know Trick and Company, also known as the Trick Trap Fool and Frustrate Crew, I know they're lurking. They did some stuff today during the trading day that tells me there's a bigger move imminent. Uh-oh, what does he mean by that? Don't worry about it. Keep your shirt on. We're going to get to it. We're going to look at a variety of different charts. Today, in particular, we're going to have to be the market version of an investigative reporter. We have to investigate the markets, investigate the charts, in order to report back what the next likely scenario is. Let's start with what's jumping off the page on the daily chart. Again, we have the 338.82. That's a gap that was not filled yesterday. They missed it by a little bit. And then today, again, they missed it by a little bit. So what you had was this morning they ran up, they made a high of 338.74, missing it by 8 cents, turning around and go back in the other direction. There are no accidents, no coincidences, it was not an accident that they missed the gap and turned around. Then, there was another gap left open from Wednesday's close. That gap was down at 334.92. The daily chart right here says 334.89. If you look at an hourly chart, it's 92. It's within a couple of pennies. We're not going to split hairs. It doesn't matter. Here's what does matter. They ran down to the lower gap, the one left open from last night. And guess what? They made a low today of 335.01, missing the gap again by pennies. It's the market's way of indicating something. This is the market's way of telling us something. The market is trying to tell a story. It's always trying to tell a story. Our job as traders, investors, analysts, whatever you want to be, our job is to decipher what's the market saying. The market speaks a language. The question is, are we able to interpret what language and what the market is saying each and every day? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Today, the market was a little bit standoffish. It was a little bit coy. Would go do one thing, come up short, go to do something else, come up short. It never really satisfied a couple or even more than a couple of the things that it should have done. Again, it's evidence. Everything the market does is evidence. In fact, everything the market doesn't do sometimes is evidence. If the market's supposed to fill a gap and it misses it by pennies and turns around and goes back in the other direction, it's not a ha-ha, that was funny. It's evidence there's something else that the market is trying to tell us. All right, now, let's get down to brass tacks. Let's kind of pan out a little bit. We'll look at the bigger picture and then we'll kind of zoom in to where we are. So we're kind of going both directions. First, we started out from a short-term intraday perspective, talking about the gaps. Now, we're taking a look at the daily chart, and we're just taking it from a different perspective. Here's a high, now here's a low. All of a sudden, we find ourselves pretty much right in the middle of the high and low. Obviously, it's pennies on either side, it's not the point. The point is, we're basically in the middle. That gap that we've been looking at, at 338.82, happens to be in the middle. What else do we have? Well, right at that gap, and we've said this for a number of days, that was essentially, and we can look at it this way, it's a breakdown area. The market made a low down here, rallied up or tried to rally up. It made a high, or it made a lower high in this case, and then basically it just opened by gapping below one day or gapping down one day, and it fell lower. So therefore, this is essentially the 338.82, just call it 339 for argument's sake, that is another breakdown area. So the market has essentially run back to check in at or run a test of a former breakdown area. That is a gap. They missed the gap. I can't let that go. It's important information. What do we do with that information? I'm circling back to the gap and then we're going to circle back to the daily chart. 
What we do with that is we have an awareness that the market, if it can't hit a number or it can't trade to or through a number during the trading day, what it has a tendency to do, and we've seen this over and over again, is gap above or gap below said number. So I'm looking at the 338.82 and saying, hey, they're hovering underneath. Are they poised to gap above the number? What would be a catalyst to gap above that number? Well, now we have to look to what's going on Friday morning, for example. Well, you got two things that I can see on the docket. You have one is the phony jobs number that can always be a catalyst to move the market. The market doesn't really give a hoot what the number is. The market's going to move and use the number as an excuse. We don't care what they do. We just know and we have the awareness that on the phony jobs number, the market has a tendency to move. Which direction? Any direction. We know and have the awareness it can move. What else do we have under our belt? We have all this talk about a stimulus package. They're talking about another $2 trillion stimulus package. The Democrats are fighting the Republicans. The Republicans are fighting the Democrats. It might as well be the Hatfield and the McCoys. But we do know this. On the news of a stimulus package passing, that'll goose the market. On the news of a stimulus package further having trouble, further infighting, further or farther away from making a deal, guess what? The market can fall. So either way, these short-term events can spark the market in either direction. What happens if we show up on Friday, let's say they have the phony jobs number release at 8.30, by the time 9.30 rolls around, they're gapping the market over the gap, over 338.82, they're trading higher, what's on the docket? The next big fat round number is on the docket, it would be 340 in the SPY, ES 3400, they won't typically stop on the number on a dime, sometimes they'll come up short, other times they'll spike through on a phony jobs number day on a Friday, if you're going to get, and this is one side of the equation, if you're going to get the upside, if you're going to get the northern move, you're going to get the big fat round number, they're going to gap over the 338.82, that's bullish, they've been winding up underneath that number for three or four days, so there's some pent up energy They'll get to the big fat round number of 340, 3400 in the ES, and then they'll likely bust through. You have a Friday, could be a trend day Friday, so therefore you'd find the market by the end of the day well into the 3400s. That's projecting. We don't know that's going to happen. I'm giving you a scenario to use as an awareness long before Friday morning happens. Here's the other side. Let's say they kill the market, whether it's on the phony jobs number, it's overnight on the lack of a stimulus package, or some black swan we don't see. Either way, they kill the market. What's going to be happening? They'll go, obviously, fill the gap they missed by pennies today. That's not that far away, but that's not where they would be going. The first order of business where we would have to focus in where they would be going is this gap here. Closing price is 328.73. That's the number that would be on the table. What about inside the numbers and the commentary throughout the day? Here's what I'll say about the commentary throughout the day. The commentary was commensurate with the market. The market was in a chop shop formation, never really went anywhere, had no conviction all day long. So what I'm going to do is let you read the commentary. I urge you to pause the video. Read the notes, go back to the charts, see what happened. Today was not one of those days where we had a pretty good cadence of the market. Today was one of those days where the market was just in a chop shop formation, chopping traders up in both directions. When that takes place, it's best to be a spectator. What I'm going to do is scroll up, let you read the notes. Most of the stuff that you'll find in the notes are things that we've already discussed. We did have some support information. We had some resistance information. So early on, even before the opening bell, you can see here we're focused on if the market dropped 33.69 down to 33.61. That was a little bit of a wide range, but the market was up a lot overnight, so we had this space to contend with. The market gives us what it gives us early in the morning. We have to just deal with the numbers as they come. You'll also notice that the line in the sand is listed at 
55. So here we've got some numbers. Let's go ahead and take a look at a chart and see what happened. Here's a 15 minute chart today, right at the vertical is today's activity. You're familiar with that type of arrangement. And I've got two numbers depicted on the board, 3361 and 3355. As a point of reference, you can see what happened early in the morning. The market opened up, it gapped down, it found some support slash stability in and around that zone as prescribed early in the morning in the pre-market, but it never really went anywhere. It just went sideways and chopped around all day long, hence the chop shop formation. So therefore, you get the point, let's move it along, let you read the notes at your leisure, pause the video, go back to the charts, do it at your leisure. We're not gonna spend any time inside the numbers today. Why? Because it was a chop shop. I kinda showed you the whole thing when I put those lines on the board, went back to the chart a minute ago. The rest of it, you can read on your own, go back and check out what happened to price, what the price action was on the charts during the trading day. Here, as we scroll up, you'll see a chart pop up, and the point of the chart popping up is which way will she go? We're in the middle of a range. I'm opening up that conversation that we had in detail from the bigger picture perspective, but even from an intraday perspective, what I'm saying here is you can make a case that the market rallied up, came down, and is going sideways eating off the clock or eating time off the clock in a bearish formation, or you can make the counter argument that they ran up from the recent low, eating time off the clock, building energy for another push higher. We can make both cases from an intraday perspective. We can make both cases from the daily chart perspective. That's what makes the current position in the market so interesting. That's why, at least in my opinion, from where I sit, they're doing the thing where the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew are out in full force. They're missing gaps. They're acting strange. They're winding up. They're going to surprise the market in one direction or another. And what that really means is they're going to have a larger than a bread box move sooner than later. And moving right along. And then we even go into the end of the day. So there wasn't much activity in the afternoon. The market didn't do anything. If the market doesn't do anything, we're not going to force our hand on the market. We're not going to create or invent the trade. That's not there. That's a good recipe to lose. We don't want to do that. Don't invent losing propositions. Stocks on the move today. There was one potential on the board. It didn't hit its number. There was just nothing moving in the pre-market. The market was gapping higher. A lot of times when that does happen, it takes our stocks on the move opportunities off the board. Unfortunately, here's the good news. Fortunately, we're coming up into earnings season. We just closed the quarter. That means that over the next couple of weeks, you're going to start getting companies begin to report their numbers. The trades will come fast and furious as earnings season gets underway. We're going to have six to eight weeks of plenty of companies every single day reporting their numbers, creating opportunity for traders. That's the point. If you've been around here for any length of time, you've heard the term bonanza. We expect another bonanza. Here's an hourly chart of the SPY, and here's what we're going to do next. When the market is a little squishy, and what I mean by squishy is we don't necessarily know there's a lack of conviction, they're in the middle of a range, we can make a case for either thing to happen, so we need to look farther. We need to really pull back the onion and look deep under the hood. So therefore, let's take a look at some other charts. Let's look at a variety of different charts. We'll start with the hourly chart, and here's what I see. Sloping across the screen above price is a 200 period moving average. Trading underneath the 200 period moving average, the market's been consolidating or eating time off the clock, building energy underneath the 200 period moving average for several days. Each and every time the market gets pushed down, they come back up near that gap underneath the 200 period moving average. Hasn't been several days, been a couple of days underneath the 200 period moving average. You're above three out of the four moving averages that we watch. Therefore, it's very difficult to look at this pattern on the chart right now as bearish. Can certainly make a case that it's bullish. They're just not ready to break out above that gap yet. We've tested the gap a couple of times. They haven't really got rejected from the gap. They've been rejected a couple of times, but they won't stay down. They keep coming back. 
kind of like Rocky, keeps getting up off the mat. What about the 120 minute chart? So we have a similar situation, different moving average, consolidating or eating time off the clock underneath the 100 period moving average sandwiched in between the 100 and the 200 period moving average, which is right below price. Again, same deal, same bullish pattern underneath that 100 period moving average can certainly make that case. Even from a very short term perspective, but yet still using this 120 minute chart, we had this move up here and now we've basically pulled back eight time off the clock never filled the gap down here that's a pullback pattern generally speaking that's going to result in another move to the upside not a lot different than a bullish flaggish pattern it's a wedgish formation it's whatever you want to call it i hate to get wrapped up in the names you know that whenever you guys send me emails about cup and handles rising star shooting star hammer all this stuff I don't know what any of that stuff is. I don't really care. I look at the market, how I look at the market, and try and disseminate as much information as I can to you all, at least in the way in which I feel comfortable doing it. 240 minute chart, do we see anything different here? Not really, different moving average. Here, they're hovering right underneath the 50 period moving average. So we're starting to see a theme develop. We looked at three charts, we saw three different moving averages right over price where we're just eating time off the clock waiting building energy to bust through three different moving averages three different charts puzzle piece on the table something else that i'll mention that i think i mentioned either yesterday or the day before is when you come down and we're just going to do a larger picture perspective you come down and we said we had a breakout area here so you rally back to the breakout area why wasn't price rejected right away it almost was but then they bounced right back up again interpreting what the market is trying to tell us what the market is trying to tell us is it's not really ready to get rejected from that breakout area maybe the intention is another destination which would be north of that gap or breakout area again you're just inside my head sometimes i'll see something on a chart and i feel like discussing it i feel like unpacking it in real time just because i see something on the chart it's not necessarily in my notes not necessarily something i intended to talk about a minute ago it's just when i see something that i think is relevant i want to pass the information on again you're inside my head dangerous place to be you signed up for a ticket on the ride here's a weekly chart it's more important after Friday's close, but there is something important that I want to point out. It helps tell a story. So what we'll do is move this over so we have a little bit more room to draw on the chart. So we have a top in place. It's definitive. We have a top because the weekly chart put in the top. Therefore, until and unless we can close a week above the high of this top, and the high is 258.75, then that is a top. But what I'd like to do is just get a perspective of where we are, what to expect, what might the market be trying to do in order to close above or below a certain price by the end of the week. So here we come into Friday. We have a phony jobs number. We have a gap right above us that hasn't been filled. We know we can gap over that number. We've seen the market do it over and over again. They can obviously open the trap door. But is there something on the weekly chart that says, hey, if the market closes above a certain number, does it make the weekly chart look one way versus another way? Is it meaningful? Is it not meaningful? So I like to take a look before the weekly close happens. A, they're above all the moving averages. So from a weekly chart perspective, yes, we have a top. However, the market's still in an uptrend. Both things can be true, and today both things are true. But here's something else that I find important and I find it fascinating that we have two reasons why the same number is important. 338.82 is a gap. We talked about it ad nauseum. You know about the gap. But we also have something else and it almost looks like this is the reason that line is on the chart. The market runs up to a certain spot and it absolutely collapses. That was the February, March sell-off. Well, obviously, where the market ran up to is extremely important. So let's get that high. The high happens to be 339.08, just pennies above our gap at 338.82.
So now we know for two specific reasons that that general area, and I've been calling it 339, now you know why, call it 339 for argument's sake, that is a very, very important area. So the market ran up to that spot, collapsed. We have a current gap that we haven't been able to fill, and we're waiting to see if the market really is rejected from that area or it gaps above that area. 339, 338.82, give or take something in this neighborhood is important. Don't you think after Friday's close, any Friday's close, any weekly close, it would be important to find the market either back above 339 or staying below 339? Isn't this an important area? Can't this set the tone week in, week out, whether we're above or below a former breakdown area? And the answer from where I sit is, Apps freaking lootly Huh. How do you like them apples? What about Camp IWM? Are we getting any evidence from these folks? Well, maybe so. My favorite market leading indicator, what do we have? We have the IWM that was up well over two bucks today, over one and a half percent, leading the market in the upside. The S&P 500, the cash index, as a comparison, was up about one half of one percent today. So we have leading indications favorite market leading index up leading the market puzzle piece on the table question are they going to leave this gap alone closing price 153.29 are they going to leave that gap alone or are they going to go get that on friday if they're getting that gap on friday you can bet your bottom dollar that the spy is north of the gap that we've discussed ad nauseum what about the folks down at the transportation department? Now we have a divergence on our hands. You thought it was going to be clear sailing? No. This is why it's so tough. Everywhere you look, every corner of every market, on every chart you look, you can find a case one way or the other. Nothing is lining up to say, hey, this is obvious. Here's what the market's going to do. We don't have that, so we have to deal with it, which is why we're peeling back the onion and looking so deep. Again, Melting below the 20 period moving average, not the end all be all, not a federal case, not a federal crime, as still, when you look at the bigger picture perspective, and for this, we'll just pull out the weekly chart, and what do you have? You have a market that's basically just eating time off the clock in this upper range near the highs after an enormous rally. What is that? That's a bullish, flaggish pattern. They can banter back and forth inside that channel, but guess what? Until they break down below the bottom or break out above the top, it's just in a channel going back and forth. Nothing definitive. So what we do is, when we don't see something obvious on the daily chart, we just move over to a larger time frame. We look at the weekly chart. What about the folks out in Silicon Valley, the Qs? Any change? No change. Above all the moving averages on the daily chart, technically speaking, still in an uptrend, nothing wrong with this market. They're in the process of a repair operation. Let's say we get that northern reaction after the phony jobs number or for some other reason on Friday. What's the target for the queues? Maybe, maybe not all in one day, but what's the near-term target up north if they're going to go up north? 287. Here's the Q weekly chart, and we're going to do something with this that we've discussed using other charts over the last several days, even last few weeks. So here we have a run up to a high. So we have a pullback in a potential B leg, right? So we have an A, which is the up leg. We have a B, which is the pullback. And is C going to finish above the high of the A leg? Or do we get a truncated high and then we get another decline? So we've talked about this using the SPY chart, but I wanted to show you on the weekly chart one of the possibilities. What if we did something else? What if we said, here's the same concept, only we have a run down, which is A. We have a leg higher, which is B. And we could have a leg C, which is down, completing on the other side of the coin below the low of the A leg. Again, same thing applies up or down. What was resistance becomes support. What was support becomes resistance. ABC patterns happen in the northern direction, but they also happen in the southern direction.
another one of the reasons why it's so difficult right now to read the tape. What's the weekly chart telling us from a trend perspective? The trend is up. Who is the trend? The trend is your friend. How long are you guys going to be friends for? Until the trend is over. How about the XLF? Any new revelation in the XLF? No. From the bottom around 23, they've now run up into the 20 period moving average and they've stalled out. Anything to do with that? No. Traders who are long should have taken half profit or at least something in their pocket. Take something off the table. You can let the rest ride. You just don't want to let anything you have left in terms of number of shares left over go negative on you. That's it. Go see if they can fill the gap up north. We talked about it last night. That's my game plan currently at present in a trade where it's a risk-free, emotionless trade. We like those. What about Smash Mouth? Are we getting any information from Smash Mouth? Yes, we are. It was up over 2% today. Pretty good proxy for the tech space, kind of akin to we like the IWM as our favorite market leading indicator. Well, the SMH is a tech space favorite market leading indicator up nicely today in an uptrend. Nothing wrong with this market whatsoever. Therefore, as a puzzle piece, putting it on the table, we have a number of things that are definitely puzzle pieces, pieces of evidence that are pointing in the northern direction going forward. Can't say that definitively. That's my conclusion. However, anything goes after the phony jobs number or whatever they're going to or not going to do with the stimulus. Can they open the trap door and pull the rug out? Absolutely. Can they pop the market through the gap that they flirted with up north for a couple of days? Absolutely. We have to see how they open them on Friday, and guess what? Based on how they open them, we'll get a couple of trades accordingly. We generally do. That's the way it works. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. It's everything that I wanted to and intended to discuss today, so we're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.